So we're going to start off with a story tonight uh, that concerns mostly Ni'ihau. Now, Ni'ihau is an island uh, a few miles off the coast to the southwest, and it's often called, if you hear it in, uh, started in tourism in the, during, under the territory, uh, they started calling it the Forbidden Island. And it's still used, that's still used today. And so a lot of people around the world got, in fact, some on Hawaii, in Hawaii, the rest of Hawaii, got the idea that the people, the Hawaiians who lived there, were still living the way they originally did in the days of Captain Cook when he arrived. And the original, you know, before the arrival of the Westerners. And that they were following their old traditions and they were doing all that kind of stuff. So a lot of legends grew up about this forbidden island. People living in huts and practicing the old ways. Nothing could be farther from the truth. The reason that Ni'ihau is the Forbidden Island is, it belongs, is that it belongs to the Robinson family. Now, the Robinson family used to be part of the Sinclair family, who were the first ones who bought it. They were from New Zealand. They bought it from the King of Hawaii and made it into a ranch. Now, there was already a population of Hawaiians living there from very old times, but they were there in those days when, when the Sinclairs and then Robinsons first bought it. Uh, why, when someone came over from, from overseas with a lot of money and a lot of political, other kinds of power, they were treated like a chief. So they became the kind of like the guardians of those people. But basically, it belonged to the Robinsons. I'll call them Robinsons now, because that's who own it now. And it was their land, and they had a right to kick everybody off if they wanted to. Now, that sounds terrible today, but in the old days, the same thing was true. It was the chief's land, and the chief had a right to kick anybody off if he wanted to. Right? So nothing much changed in that sense. But as time went by, the people who were living there were converted to Christianity. They became good Christians. The Robinsons, Sinclairs and Robinsons, insisted that they go to church every Sunday. They live in nice clapboard houses. The little town there of 200 people became a plantation town. And just like the ones that were in the 1800s here in the rest of Hawaii. And now today they still live in that kind of a, it's a company town. The Robinsons own everything. Okay. I mean, probably have some personal belongings. Uh, Nihau is famous. I'm going to get to the story in a moment. But Nihau is famous for uh, what's called the Nihau shell lays. So as long as we're talking a little culture, I, we have some in this case over here, if you want to look, take a look at them later. But um, basically, the traditional way of gathering these shells on Nihau, what makes them special, is they're gathered by hand. And they're gathered before the sun comes up. In the first light of dawn, before the sun has a chance to shine on them. Now, the place where they're mostly gathered is on the eastern side of, I mean, on the western side of the island anyway. So they pick them up before the sun has a chance to dull them at all. So the Ni'ihau shell lays have a beautiful shine to them. And uh, in the older days, you don't see it so much anymore, but they would collect certain colors over many, many years so that you could have a big, long strand, all of one color. Most beautiful thing to see. Today, most of them are mixed, and a lot of the so-called Ni'ihau shell lays are coming in from the Philippines and other places in Asia. But anyway, that's just to give you a background of the island. That's still a traditional art, which is slowly dying out. So now let's tell a story about Ni'ihau. A long time ago, before Captain Cook, uh, that's how we, that's like saying once upon a time, okay? Why, uh, the Nihau people were living fine and they fished around their islands. Once in a while they'd come over to Kauai and trade, but basically they kept to themselves until something started happening that was, was very, very bad. And no one heard from the people of Nihau for the longest time. People wondered about it, but then, you know, those people are way over there and they always were kind of quiet and standoffish, so nobody went over to investigate. They just wouldn't do that kind of thing. But finally, someone going down to the shore one day found a swimmer on shore 
half dead, brought him up, took care of them, revived them, and it was a Nihal person, Nihal man. And he told what was going on. He said, all the people, it's not a big island, but they all had to leave their village and they all had to scatter into what little wilderness they had. No one could go back home because some evil spirits, malicious spirits, a variety of what's called e'epa, were ravaging the population. Because what, what happened would be the people would gather and they, let's say they gather, the men would gather in the men's hut, and the women in the women's hut, and then these spirits would sneak in and they just tear everybody apart. People became afraid to gather and afraid to live together. So it was a terrible thing. He barely escaped with his life, this man. And so he begged if there was a kahuna on the island of Kauai who could go and help them. And there was. There was a kahuna. We'll call him uh, Hululoa, which means long feather. And he said he would go over there and see what he could do because it needed the kahuna of some kind to be able to deal with this kind of spirit. So there are lots of different kinds of kahunas, but this is one who dealt in this kind of, of work. So he was paddled over there, uh, landed at night on the eastern shore, walked over the, the plateau and very carefully looking around to see what would happen. And he saw these wandering spirits. And he tuned into them and he got an idea of what kind of spirits they were and at the same time an inspiration of what to do about it. So he came back to Kauai and he found another kahuna who was a woodcarver. And he had him carve these figures of human beings, only about waist up, so make them so real that they looked like they were living, breathing human beings. But to make them out of the hardest wood available. Now there were two kinds of hard wood like this that they found. One is lehua, or ohia lehua, and this was used for canoe paddles, and this was used for tools, and very, very hard wood. If you see it on the island today, sometimes you'll see a kind of a dusty green leaves, and you'll see these bright sun bursts of uh, red flowers, okay? Just like a burst of flame. That's the ohia lehua. And so they used that wood. They used another wood, same as this one, this is called kawila. This wood was used for digging sticks and spears, and it's so dense that it won't float. You know, put this in water and sink right down. So they made these figures out of this very, very hard wood. And then he got some brave canoe paddlers to come with him. A lot of Hawaiians were afraid of spirits, but he got the bravest of the soldiers and went over there. And he went just before dawn. Now, the Spirits were mostly active at night. And so at dawn, they were a lot less active. They were starting to go back to where they, they hid during the day. So he snuck in. He found the men's house. And there was a log where people sat in the men's house. So he set up all these figures on the log, facing the door. And they had these little doors that you had to crawl through. And there was not a lot of light inside. Okay? But he set up all these figures on the log. And then he went back and they hid in some bushes that were far enough away so they could see what was going on. And they waited until after nightfall. And then they heard the stirrings and they smelled the smells. The worst of the spirits always smelled bad. If something smelled bad, it was a bad spirit. So they waited until then. And then the spirits came and they saw them go one by one into the house. And some came out and called to the others and all of them went into this house and you hear this big rush and this great howl and this terrible crunch. And all the spirits came whipping out off over the ocean into the sea and no one ever saw them again. And when they went inside, they found that every one of these, in front of every one of these pieces of carved figures, right on the floor, the ground in front of them were broken teeth because what this wood was just too hard. And the spirits went in and they were grabbed for the human being and broke all their teeth. And that just shamed them so much they couldn't stand it anymore. So they all left the island. No one has ever seen them again, which is why you know it's a true story. Okay. Okay. Now,